Hi, it's Kernsex here with a small addition to the videos about installing Gen 2 on a 32-bit system. Um, what this video is about is just about uh, tidying up after the complete rebuild we did. Um, because we've got every single package, some of those packages have got config files. And when packages are rebuilt or updated that have config files, um, there are like boilerplate config files installed into the system and you get a warning about that at the end of the um, emerge. Now I did get that warning but because I did other things um, I forgot about it and um, I think it's only the emerge that you get the warning on uh, so I, I just forgot about it. Um, but what I was going to do is just to show you uh, that message and how you can deal with those um, config files and how you either integrate them into the system or, or just ignore ignore them depending on whether you've altered or configured or made modifications to the config files. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to contrive a situation just to show the message that would appear on the, on the screen to show that these config files need updating. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to merge a small package, PCI Utils. Uh, I'm going to use this minus one, which is the one shot um, option, which means that just update the package, don't bother entering it into the library. And what that means is I don't need to be concerned whether it's in the world set or not. Um, gen, uh, the portage system will just emerge the library. And if it was in the world system originally, it would stay there. And if it wasn't, it won't be added. So it, it just means that nothing gets uh, touched because the reason we'll do this is because the last thing you want to do is to add everything into the world set because that can cause problems with um, if there are updates to packages where a package needs to be removed from the system for whatever reason for example maybe there's a different package that provides similar or same functionality but different name then the one that wants uh, is needed to be removed, can't be removed because it's in the world set and the world set can only be removed manually by, by the user, by the administrator. So for that reason, if, if it couldn't uninstall that version, it means it can't install the new version which takes on that new functionality and that, that would cause a problem. You'd get a message saying um, there's probably, say, there's a blocker. Um, so you, you want to add packages to the world set only when it's strictly something you know you definitely want to be part of the system and you don't want to have it disappear one day after an update. So that's the minus one. Like I say, there's also a long form of that called one shot. I think it's spelt like that. It, if it isn't, it'll be uh, one word like that, one shot. Um, of course, you can do emerge help and there is a manual page, a very good manual page. This gives you a, um, a summary of common commands. It's not a complete set of commands. Um, I don't know if, yeah, there it is there. So it is one word, one shot. But I tend to use just the short form for common um, uh, parameters. So the other two I use always is A and V. So A is to ask. I want it to ask me before it does anything. Always wise to do that and V for being more verbose. There's also one called pretend, I'm not sure if that's here. Yes, there it is up there. And what that does, it, it goes through the motions, it shows you everything it would do, and then it just drops back to the prompt, and it does nothing else. Um, I used to use that, but I found you've then got to rerun Emerge. If you if you decide it's okay, you've got to rerun Emerge, maybe with the A and the V. Um, and if when you've got a system with, I think I've got several about 1500 packages, one of them's got nearly 2000 packages, um, the emerge command can take a number of minutes depending on the, depending on the speed of the machine. Um, and then if you've got blockers or conflicts and things, that, that process, especially with the backtrack option that you use when I'm doing an update, um, it can take like 10, 15 minutes. So, I find it easier to just do the AV um, switches 
straight away and then I've got the option if I want to carry on I do yes and if I don't want to carry on I just do no the only caveat I have to warn you about is that it is easy to accidentally press the enter button if you're not got your wits about you or if you knock the button on the keyboard something like that happens and you can accidentally start it off so using the pretend option is fail safe it will just run show you the results and not do anything more whereas as I say with the um, A option the ask option there is always a small chance that you can accidentally um, get it going and maybe you didn't want, want the actual emerge to, to happen at that point but generally I find it it's uh, more than suitable for me so I'm going to merge um, PCI utils now it doesn't really matter what order you put this in um, but if you look at the um, usage for emerge you can see the options should come first um, then the action um, then yeah, depending on what you're doing um, so for example ebuild here is what I'm I, I want so I want PCI utils and indeed it um, I find that I put the options everywhere on the line I'm quite quite lazy about it but um, if you want to know exactly what to do then obviously this help screen or even better the man page the man page is very detailed so obviously PCI utils is all in the system um, it will just rebuild it, it won't do anything more than that so the actual uh, point of doing this remember is not to rebuild it that part is actually pointless the reason I'm doing this is to show you the message that we had previously when we rebuilt the whole of the system um, and as far as I can remember this is the only way to get it back is by doing an emerge and letting it complete so like I say this won't take more than a minute or so yeah, it's, it's compiled it, so it's just got to install it now. Okay, so now it's installing. Now, right, so there's the message at the bottom there. It says there's five config files in ETC need updating. And um, what I'm going to show you is the way I do it, but I'm just going to get a web page up which shows you that there are actually several other ways to do this. Um, so let's get the web page here. Right, I'll just put this on this screen here. So if I go to the Gen2 web page, and I'll just make that a little bit bigger. Right. Uh, so I'm going to go to the documents so I'll go to get started go to the handbook go to the x86 and down here there's um, right first of all we didn't finish this last bit of the installation the um, finalizing to add a, add a user and moving tables so I'll do that in a moment uh, let's get another tab with this this section is quite good it's quite good to go through and uh, learn a little bit more in detail about Portage and what functions it's got. Um, I'm not sure if it's exception, but each one of these is uh, well worth a read. Um, I'll just go through them. So there's a bit there about use flags, which again I'll be explaining a little bit more in um, some future videos actually show you how I use them but there's a load of good information there even down to how um, 
the interaction between uh, use flags is decided depending on what's in the e build, which is like the config file for each build. Uh, there's a bit about distributed computing there to speed up builds. I've tried that, it's okay, it's a, it can be a little bit unreliable. Um, I found it was uh, more effort than it's work worth. It's kind of a thing that's interesting to have a go at, but um, I don't know whether it's because the machines I was using were quite a lot different. Um, whether if you were compiling on a um, cluster of computers that were similar technology, it might be better, but it kind of worked. Uh, so stuff about run levels and writing your own init scripts there if you need to. Run level behavior, boot level. Uh, environment variables, that's, that's quite useful to know. It shows you some stuff that can go into make.conf. As I say in the future videos, I will be explaining a little bit more detail some of these um, uh, other variables. This is a really good chapter about the portage files, some of the configuration files, what they do and where they live. Um, I want to now configuration. So this is kind of stuff we've done already. About branches. Right, yeah, this is the page. So it's additional tools. It's under under working with portage, additional tools. So when you get these um, config files, it says they need to be updated. And there are sections of the Emerge Man page to learn how to update the config files. Um, and also there's this web page here. And what there is is three tools you can use. This is dispatch conf, etc update and this quick package um, and it explains how they work there and what they can do and what the advantages of using one of the other is. But if I show you what's happened here it might make those tools a bit more oops, um, a bit more um, understandable as to, to what's happening. So if I go into the etc directory, what I normally do to sort these out myself, because I don't use those tools, I prefer to examine them manually myself and alter them if I need to, is I do find minus name and then all these new config files start with a dot and an underscore. So I just look for any file beginning with a dot and an underscore. So because they begin with a dot, normally you wouldn't be able to see them. If you just did an ls, you'd have to do an ls with it with the A option. So what I do is I run that command and that shows me where all these new config files are. And you can see they all start off with dot underscore CFG. And then if there's several config files in the same directory, this number, the 000, goes up by one. Uh, sorry, if they're the same name, that is. You can see there's two same ones here in the same directory, but they're actually different configs. And what these uh, commands do is they, in various ways, um, show you the differences between the newly installed config file that isn't active because it's hidden and it's got this prefix in front of it. So your config file would still be active. So my log rotate.conf is the one that's still the one that will be read and acted upon. But this log rotate with the prefix.config000 zero underscore um, that's the one that was pulled in when I did the complete rebuild of the system and it's it, this message here is warning me that I need to take note because sometimes what happens is you'll get a new package come in and it's got more options in the config so you might want to take that one on some of the options you're using in the current config file may be um, obsolete or, or simply won't work anymore so in that case, you need to merge any changes you've got in your config with the new config layout. Um, and that's what these programs do. And so it just explains there what differences are. So I, I don't use them. I just use a few um, command line tools. Whether they would save me any time or not, I don't know. But I find it doesn't take more than a minute or two to go through these and um, resolve the issues myself and to do that for example the first one which is in the etc directory I would do diff 
the new file so this one's log rotate and I'll compare it with the current file and you can see that the one on the left which is the new file the weekly option is set and my my config file the daily option is set so that's the difference and if you remember that was we did that because of the instructions on the gen 2 handbook about installing log rotate it recommended a daily update so i'm happy that that's that's the only thing that's different the um i know that i've changed that so i'm going to get rid of the uh hidden uh the new hidden log rotate config file because there's nothing new there it offers my my own config file and i'm happy with the way my config file is so i'll just remove that and then i'll just do likewise for the next one which is the host file so you can guess what the changes are in the host file i've edited that for this pc so it's going to be just the changes i imagine that i've made for the host file and indeed it is you can see that i've um, commented out local host for the IPv6 see my, my file is the one on the right Let's see the little arrow shows you and also I've added in aliases for the local host IP address so again I'm happy there's nothing new that's coming in on the config file and you wouldn't expect anything new anyway because it was just a rebuild I did just rebuilt every package with um, uh, more efficient compilation options so again I'm just going to get rid of that file happy with that if the other config files go off the screen just run the find command again you should find obviously the list has gone down because we've got rid of two of them so the next two are in conf.d and just a matter of again doing the same thing first one is key maps again this is going to be different because I changed it to a UK key map from a US key map and yes that is the only change so I'll just get rid of that and you can see it's quite easy it's not not too onerous to do this manually and do diff on the last one in the comp directory which is the hw clock file again this will be all about to do to do all to do with the um, uh, time zone information whether the clock set to UTC time zone or a local time zone so I set it to local because like I said I, I have uh, Windows XP on this machine although the disk is disconnected at the moment um, it will be going back so I'll just again remove the config file the new one that came in leave my one intact that's okay and I'll just run the find command again there should just be one more left which is correct that's the SSH directory diff the new hidden file with the current file and it's because I added this setting to allow root to log in remotely so what I might do actually I'll delete the hidden file and I'm going to actually modify that file to turn that off just to keep the system secure I'm going to be adding a an ordinary user in a moment so right okay and I'll be adding via as well uh, nano right. nano sshd so let's find where that was there it is there so I'm going to explicitly set that to no and did I remove the hidden yes I did so I'll just restart the SSH server uh, in it to take that setting on so now means I cannot log, log into this machine remotely because I've only got a root user and root user is not allowed to log in remotely so I go back to the etc directory and I'm going to do my find command once more just to be sure everything's gone and it has so that means now if I did another emerge I wouldn't be getting that warning about um, these config files that need to be examined so that's uh, really the only bit I wanted to say to finish off that actual update um, the last bit I will do for this part is to do the 
final bit of the installation chapter which is adding a user for daily use you can see here um, and this will allow me to log on remotely as well because I'll be able to log on as a remote user and if I need to become the root I can either do SU or install sudo and log in uh, or become root as, as uh, from the user as, as uh, with sudo so you can see here it gives you an example of how to add a user called Larry and how to give some default um, groups so I'll just copy that command oh I can't copy it in because I'm actually on the terminal here so what I'll do is I'll just type it by hand it's not too much so user let's go back user add minus m and you can find out what these do I think the minus m creates the home directory uh, the G is the list of groups that you want the user to be part of. So Wheel allows the user to, to get super user privileges. Audio allows it to play music. Minus S tells the um, ad user ad command what shell you want the user to have as default. And then right at the very end, I add in the name of the user. Okay, we haven't got the user group, that's probably not that surprising actually. And the last thing to do, if I switch back, as you can see, is to do password Larry to give Larry a password because at the moment the password's unknown. So let's do pass. Oh, type the right keyboard. Password. Kernel okay, text. Okay, yeah, they're, they're enforcing stronger passwords now. This, uh, I presume it's Shadow, is it? I don't know which program does this bit. Um, maybe one of the utils packages, like Core Utils, possibly, or Unix Utils. Um, so I need to put in a better password. Didn't like that either. Right, let's make a note of that one. Okay. So let's go back to the browser. Um, removing the tarballs, you can delete the uh, state tree tarballs and uh, other associated stuff. Oops. Um, if you want from the root. Um, for some reason, I never bother deleting them. I just leave them there. Um, not really sure why, but I have found it's uh, uh, a way of knowing when I built the machine. So you can see not only there is a date in the image of the stage three file, but it's the actual date it was created. Um, date and time. So it's only 200 meg. If I was that short for space, I'd probably delete it. But I tend to leave them there just to, as a, a reference, I guess. Um, and that's it for the installation. You can see it tells you where to go for more documentation. Well, we've seen some of that already. Um, and there's the forums. They've got an internet relay chat as well, mailing lists, um, how to send bugs in and so on. So that is the end of the basic installation of uh, Gen 2 system. Uh, in future videos, I'm going to... The next video I'll probably be doing showing how to update um, Gen 2 so normally updates you know when normal distribution updates come in and you can I, I don't know they might come in automatically or then you might be notified that there are updates and you have to click on something to get them in or you might have to click something to to pull the updates in with Gen 2 it's all um, done more or less manually so you have to pull the updates in there's two stages to it really. There's um, synchronizing the repository, so that's like the catalog of all the packages that are available. Then there's running a merge to find uh, what's been updated and then building those packages. So it's kind of like the sort of two or three different stages. Um, and that's how the Gen 2 system is updated. And that's 
probably what makes it a rolling release distribution as well. There's no, oh, this is Gen 2 2020 or we're releasing Gen 2 2021 next week. Um, it's just continually updated. It's like it's organic. Um, so the, the only time you could say it's a little bit like a point release is if you don't update the system for a few months. So then you'll find there's lots of updates and you might even have some problems getting the system updated because uh, some files have got so out of date um, they're rather not available to be rebuilt um, or you need newer packages that need to be rebuilt that need a certain package that's a little bit older but uh, newer than what you've got a little bit older than what the latest is in the repository but a lot newer than what you've got on your machine and things can get a little bit sticky then so um, yeah, I'll be going through all that in the next video and then maybe in some future videos I'll start installing some actual apps and things, maybe even next windows depending on how fast this machine is. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the plans anyway. So thank you very much for watching and if you like the video please uh, click on the thumbs up and like it and if you want to hear about more of my videos when they get published please click the red subscribe button. Thank you very much, goodbye.